Okay, uh, welcome to week 14 of Visual Fundamentals for Digital Media. So far, we've looked at a number of the different um, Adobe applications, um, and uh, we've looked at, primarily for web design, we've looked at Adobe Dreamweaver. This is because um, Dreamweaver, Adobe Dreamweaver used to be Macromedia Dreamweaver. Once upon a time, um, Adobe did not have a web design tool and so they acquired macromedia um pretty much so that they could get a hold of flash and dreamweaver and uh they acquired all the other uh macromedia products at that time um except fontographer um and they uh said that they would keep them all and for a while they kept them all um uh, but slowly over time they sunsetted or stopped supporting and didn't come out with new versions of most of them. Um, so now there's only a few of the Macromedia products left in the Adobe Creative Cloud or Creative Suite, depending on which one you're using. And um, Dreamweaver is one of them. But uh, Dreamweaver is sort of the industry standard for web design. Um, but as I mentioned in a past video, um, it's looking like more and more um, Adobe is throwing their uh, throwing their efforts into their own uh, web design tool that they created from the ground up called Muse. And um, I suspect that by the time some of you graduate, uh, Adobe will have discontinued Dreamweaver uh, in favor of Muse. But since it's the industry standard and since it's in our um, uh, course description, of course, it's the product that we had to cover in here. However, I would be remiss if I did not also show you Adobe Muse because by the time some of you are probably out working for clients um, or yourselves or wh whoever, um, you may be stuck with Muse or uh, doing stuff uh, with a different uh, program other than Dreamweaver. So with that said, let's just open up Adobe Muse and uh, dive in and take a look at, at what we can do with that. Um, so it wants me to update. I'm saying update later. Okay, so... There's the there's some little tutorials in here that you can take a look at. The first thing that pops up it says create as this video it says create responsive websites without writing code, and that's one of the big advantages of um, Muse uh, is that you really don't need to know any code. Uh, for Dreamweaver, you didn't technically need to know code, but it really helped to know some code. With Muse, you just you don't need to know code at all. So let's create a new website. So to do that, we just click on new and we wait while it opens up. So new site, and then we can choose the width and we can choose the uh, maximum page width. I tend to leave things at defaults. Of all columns, which allows you to choose your uh a, a, a number of columns that exist only for the purposes of layouts. They're not actually on your site. I find them helpful and I tend to like to go with five columns. There are more advanced settings you can get into like the minimum width and height, the margins, uh, the resolution, etc. I tend to leave that alone and just go with the defaults because the defaults have been their defaults for a reason. They're pretty much web optimized for most browsers. Okay. So the first thing you'll notice is that it looks a heck of a lot like InDesign. It is the same type of Adobe uh, interfaces in design. Um, and that'll be more apparent when we actually open a page. So you've got uh, all of your web pages that are part of your site are going to be in this top grid area. OK, and then at the bottom, uh, just like with InDesign, you have your masters. So this is sort of the master. Anything you do up here to each page only affects that page. Anything you do to the master 
affects all the pages that use that master and it's possible to have more than one master so if your top level of your site uses one one master template then your next level down you might use a different master template and that helps people know that um, hey I'm one level into this site or something like that okay so you see when I I roll over this there's plus symbols below it and plus symbols next to it that's because when I if I click that plus symbol it creates a sub page well I don't want to do that so let me just undo Oh, it's not going to let me undo. There we go. Um, I want to make uh, a site that's more lateral. So I'm going to add another page. Um, and uh, this will be, say, uh, just like we created a photographer's site uh, or photographer's um, material for in InDesign. Um, we're going to create a photography website here in um, Muse, although you could create any kind of website you want. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and say, hey, since photography, let's have a gallery of images. And then maybe what else would a photographer have? Um, if it's a photography business, maybe about us. Otherwise, maybe an artist statement if it's a fine art site. Um, and then, uh, of course, you want them to be able to uh, contact you. Um, so a contact um, page. And then um, maybe uh, if you do different, offer various services, you might want to have a services page for, you know, what various photography services you offer. And there we go. So now we have five different pages these pages are not connected to each other in any way so if we were to publish this site now you would just have a home page and nobody be able to get to any of these other um, pages so uh, we need to make sure to connect them okay um, before we do that I want to take a look at exactly what one of these pages looks like so I'm gonna to go to the home page and double click on that Oop. actually changed my mind I'll double click on the master so that you can see um, and then there's a tour um, that you can take a look at um, I'm just gonna close that out and the first thing you'll notice is that you have um, this gray area and a white box in the middle and um, then five uh, blue rectangles and four blue lines crossing it. So what makes uh, Muse different from um, Illustrator or Photoshop or any of the other uh, tools we've seen in design is that what you're looking at here um, in the other products, this is your document. But in Muse, since you're dealing with a website, people can scroll to the left, scroll to the right. This whole area is the website. This white part is just, it only exists to help you lay out your content. If you were to actually view this web page, it would be plain gray. The white and the guides here only exist for you to, uh, to help you out. So you could actually... Um, eliminate them if you wanted um, but we're going to keep them for now um, this area to the left and to the right and below and even a little bit above uh, is what's called the browser fill it's the area that um, that that your content is centered on if you don't want if you want a little more space at the top before your title or whatever you can drag your top of the page down some um, and uh, you know give you a little bit more um, room uh, you can reduce or increase your header space uh, this is where most of your contents gonna fall 
At the bottom, you have a footer that you can make larger or smaller, and then you can make drag up or down the bottom of your page. Okay, the important thing to know is that this is all, these are all just tools to help you center whatever text, image, and other content you're going to have on your page. It is not actually visible, it's just guides. Okay. So um, now the basic way to add something into uh, into to Muse is file place, and then you can choose uh, a you know something to put there. Um, I don't really have anything handy, so. I'm not going to bother putting in anything right now, but um, basically you could put in a uh, place, say a logo or something in here at the top. Um, we're going to leave that aside for now. Okay. Um, so uh, the browser fill itself out here is what the color of your web page is going to be. So, uh, so if I were to, uh, preview site in browser. I click on that and it pops open a browser and I see a uh, plain white page. I can change that color by going up to my browser fill. You see it's white and then there is our familiar color picker. Um, so, you know, what I kind of like is 50% gray, 127, 127, 127, or 7F, 7F, 7F. Uh, basically, remember that whenever we have our R and G and B all equal, remember that that's... Uh, that's that's gray that's some sort of gray it's on the gray scale i actually prefer it a little bit darker so i'm going to make these all about 150. um no wait uh 150 actually that made it lighter i forgot because it was at 127 and we're adding remember it's additive so uh Actually, I want to take it down some. So let's take it down to 100 each. That's better. Um, okay, so basically now if we were to preview it, it'd be a plain gray page. And it opens up in a browser and we see that it is in fact plain gray. Okay, so uh, now um, the first thing we're going to need to do here is um, put in the name of the site. So let's take, um, say, a, our text tool, and right up here at the top, we'll drag that out to create a text box. And in that text box, we can type whatever we want. Oops. There we go. There's our text box. Uh, and I'm going to put let's make it all in caps. Eric's photography. All right, um, fine. Uh, and then let's increase that font size. There we go, I like that. And we can click on here and, oops, I created a new one, undo that. Grab it, move it where we want it. Put it right there, say, so it's aligned along that side. All right, and um, 
as you can see, Eric's photography is here in um, default font, my default font, Arial. Um, now, here's your choices when it comes to fonts. You can um, choose one of the standard fonts like Arial, Comic Sans, but don't choose Comic Sans. Courier New, Geneva, Georgia, Helvetica, the greatest font there is if you paid attention to our uh, font videos last week. Lucida Gr Sans, Palatino, Times, Trebuchet, and Verdana. These 11 fonts uh, are your basic fonts that uh, you want to work with most of the time. That's because they exist across all all platforms and operating systems so whether you're on android or an iphone uh, you know a samsung galaxy say uh, an iphone or um, whether you're on a tablet or whatever it's gonna have no matter what browser they have it's gonna have these 11 fonts these are sort of standard across all systems um, so uh, then your next choice is system fonts. These are all the system fonts you have on your computer. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of them. Um, you know, so if you want like the look of say this nice one, Apple Chancery, Chancery, you can click on that. But there's a problem. Basically, if you look down here, this little, little T with a uh, symbol for a picture is there. And the reason that that is there is because um, because uh, it basically, let me see if I can can take you back here to I don't know what happened there um, all right um, if you see here Let's highlight that and go back to Apple Chancery Chancery, I think is what I had. Um, there we go. Um, basically, if you, you click here, you'll notice that under system fonts, it says exports as image. Because not all systems may have your system's fonts, um, it basically will turn that uh, word, in this case, Eric's photography, into a JPEG. So uh, that's probably not what you want to do because then once it's a JPEG, you can't make any changes to it. If I want to change, say, the name at a later date on this site to Eric Chatterjee's photography, I wouldn't be able to do it because it will would have turned it into an image as soon as I published it on the web. So that's why you probably don't want to use system fonts. But there's another choice. Besides system fonts and standard fonts, you can choose instead web fonts. And then uh, web fonts will take you to, um, to Adobe Typekit. Adobe Typekit's another one of the applications that comes with the Creative Suite or Creative Studio. And you have all these different choices. Um, it comes with 400 different fonts um, that you can choose from. And um, you can then say you like um, Rosario and click on that, say OK. It adds that font. It was added to your menu. You say OK. So now we can change that to uh, go to my web fonts and, and change it to uh, 
Rosario regular. That's a nice font. Okay. Now, what will happen if we, uh, if, if it was one of the standard 11 fonts, we're fine. What if the person doesn't have Rosario on their computer? Okay, so if you had chosen Rosario or some other font from your uh, system fonts, it would just get turned into an image like we said. But since we chose it from Adobe Typekit, Typekit is a server full of images that Adobe has. And it inserts a little piece of code into this here behind the scenes so that uh, it tells any device um, that goes to this web page, any phone, any tablet, any computer going to this uh, web page, to uh, that this is the word Eric's photography written in the Rosario font, which it automatically um, displays by uh, the code that links their browser to the to your Adobe Typekit. So any font you have in your Adobe Typekit, you can use without worry, and it will appear in exactly as you want it on their um, whatever browser they're viewing your page on. Um, so uh, you can basically those are your three options when it comes to fonts. Okay. So moving right along, uh, so we have this. Let's go back to our uh, website view here. Um, you can see these are in tabs. That tab is the master, or um, this is the website. We can always close that and reopen it at any time because it's just down here. We double click on it, it's back. Um, so uh, because we made that change to the master, You'll see that it's on the home page. It's on the gallery page. We don't need to re-put Eric's photography on every page because we did it to the master. We put it on the master. So um, anything you want to appear across all of your pages, you do on your master. Anything that's unique to one particular page, you put on the, um, the page that you want to work with. All right. But now, as we said before, these pages are all completely disconnected right now. So how do we get them to, um, to, to connect to each other? We need to add some navigation. So uh, we want to go to design, the design tab, and then we want to go to the widgets library over here. That opens up or pops out this menu and we have different kinds of widgets that we can add. The different widgets you, choices you have fall into these different categories, buttons, compositions, forms, menus, panels, slideshows, and social. And since uh, we're talking about navigation, we're generally talking about menus. So click that and we can either have a horizontal or a vertical menu choose horizontal. I'm going to choose horizontal for this project and it sort of gives you a preview of what it looks like. You'll see it says lorem ipsum dolor sit amet. That's basically uh, Greek text which is the default you know, when you're designing but when you actually double click on it and or click and drag it out here onto the thing we get the actual um, menu. Now, as you can see, you can dress, scale it, do whatever you want. I like this. As you can see, the uh, column becomes red when we're perfectly aligned with it. And as you can see, it already has home, gallery, about us, contact, and services. In the old days with Dreamweaver, in the beginning days when I was started web designing, you would have to create an image map and hand code each of these buttons to go to the various pages that you want. But not anymore. Um, you can see that they're all there. Now, I made a mistake because I put this on the home page and I kind of want the same exact menu on all of the different pages. So let me undo that and 
close home and instead open the master and add a horizontal um, menu to that align it to the left side, align it to the right side, and there we go. Now, if I go back and look at the website, um, basically they're all sort of connected now. I can, um, if I, it's already inserted the code. Um, so if I previewed the site in a browser, And I'm on home. If I clicked gallery, I would go to the gallery page. You can see it's the gallery. They're, these are all identical right now because we haven't put anything in them. But you can see up at the top here which page you're on, contact, services, etc. So I'm going to close Firefox, go back to Muse. Okay, so now they're all connected. And you can move these around and they'll stay connected. So if about us, for example, you wanted to put... Um, the contact page under that and maybe the services page too then if you went to about us you could uh, go you know they would be underneath it but you know I'm creating a lateral page here as I said anyway you can drag and drop things all right so um, if we go back to design and we're on the master and you know we double click on any one of these we can change the design of the individual buttons um, <clears throat> now if we we look at these buttons here or this uh, the whole menu um, if we go over here you can see there's states if you cl click on states you can see uh, what uh, these particular buttons look like under their different states so normal this is gray if you roll over it it's gray if you mouse down it's darker gray and if it's active it's gray <laughs> so let's change it so that if it's active people know it's active so what we can do is we can then um, click on that and say choose a uh, different color for uh, for it um, for the text uh, on there and now when someone clicked on that, which if it was active, whichever page they're on is going to be red up here in the um, the, the text. Um, we can also uh, change, um, you know, the, the background color, um, you know, so that it changed. And we can change it for each of the different states. Anyway, um, so... Whichever one we're on now, when it's highlighted, is red. So let's click out of the master and open up the gallery and take a look at that. Now, since we're on the gallery, you'll notice gallery is um, highlighted in red. Um, one other thing, if we go back to the master, um, you know, we can choose our menu here and change our text um, all the things we learned about font fonts last time is here uh, the default is Georgia we don't want that we want it to be Rosario to match uh, the rest of our um, site um, the color is white by default let's change that to black to match Eric's photography and so there we have it uh, in our master. Uh, again, um, if we close that out and go to a different panel, here it is. About us is red because we're it's the one page we're working on right now, um, and we've selected that 
by st whatever state we choose that, that that's active is going to be red. Okay. Um, so you can choose other, uh, you can do other things to define the stuff, um, and mess around, play around with the design of it. Um, but let's move on. So let's take a look at the contact page. Okay. So say they, that, uh, you want to, them to be able to contact you. Um, well, we can do that again by going to the widgets library and um, you can put in whatever you want here. Um, first, let's, uh, let's add a text box. Go to the text tool and I'll drag in here and I'll type, um, thank you for your interest in my photography. You can contact me here or at my main website uh And we'll put that on its own line and call it Eric's Amazing World. I don't know, just made that up. That's the name of my website, say. And then I can highlight Eric's Amazing World. And if I go up to add or filter links under hyperlinks here I can I can add a link say to http colon slash slash www dot eric's amazing world dot com I have no idea if there's a site at that place it's not if there is it's not mine I just made it up but by putting that in, now suddenly I've got a live hyperlink to that website here. Okay, now uh, I said you can contact me here or at the main website. Um, now I gotta give them a way to contact me, so I go to forms and I can select a simple contact form and drag that out here. Um, I can give it uh, a name, it says contact form. I'm gonna put contact us and then email to, and then you put in your email there. And then after sending um, what hap, you can have it redirect them somewhere back to the home page or whatever. It's best to leave it on the current page. You can choose what fields to have here. You know, if you wanna, you know, cell phone number, um, if you want um, your home address or um, whatever, you can include that in the web form here. Uh, you can add other custom fields too. Uh, that looks good. So we'll just take that web form and we'll, using our design tools here, we can see that that's exactly spaced evenly 28 pixels on either side. I want to lower it so it's in line with the top of the other part and that looks good and there we go um and so um basically uh there you have your basic web form um filled out you know created um and uh so there we go uh, let's close contacts and we'll go back to our main site. Okay. Um, let's see what else shall we go over, uh, running out of time here. Um, so, uh, a couple other things to show you real quick. Um, one thing you can do is you can, another, uh, type of widget you can add from your widget library, um, 
is social widgets. So um, this is great because you basically have, um, you can put a link to um, Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn. You can put a PayPal button on there. Um, you can uh, put, you know, a link to your, um, your Twitter. Um, so if you want them to follow you on Twitter, you can just drag that in there and, um, you know, I'll put it down here in the bottom corner and then follow at, and I'm just going to leave the default. You would put your Twitter handle in here and it would take people to your Twitter feed. Um, uh, so there you go. Um, and it's got a little Twitter link down there um, and how many followers you have. Um, so it's super handy, uh, especially if you do Pinterest or uh, have a Vimeo or a YouTube channel or are active on Facebook or your Eric's Photography has a Facebook page. You can have a link for them to like your Facebook page or you can have a link to have them follow your Facebook or both. Um, if you could put in a link to Google Maps to um, to your location. Say, uh, you know, if you're a store, you want them to be able to find you. So um, that's all pretty handy. So now uh, let's close uh, out of the master and go specifically to the gallery page because there's one more thing I want to show you guys how to do. And I got a request for how to do a slideshow. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this is yet another thing that's in the widgets library. Um, right above social there, there are slideshows. So you might want um, thumbnails of your uh, slideshow um, in uh, here on your gallery page um, and then it automatically has a default all of this is customizable you know so these are the um, default photos that just come off the off the rack as it were um, but you can select the photos you want um, from your computer uh, to be here in, in your gallery. You can also customize the navigation and everything of this. Um, but I'd like to put in a slideshow just as the, say the background of the, the page itself, the, um, the home page. Um, so let's uh, choose a different slideshow for that, a full screen slideshow, drag and drop that right on there. Um, now, you see when I did that, it covered everything up. Well, that's no good. So let's undo that. That's option Z or um, edit, uh, undo. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go to the layers palette. And the layers palette works just like layers in Photoshop and some of the other Adobe things we've seen. So uh, we can go file, um, actually do it right in here. I right click, add layer, and there's layer two. Now everything we've done so far is on the, the layer one. So let's drag layer two down below layer one because we want to add the slideshow behind in the background behind all this so that it's not covering our navigation bar or our words or our Twitter uh, link. So, okay, that looks good. We can close that, go back to widgets library and choose a full screen show, drag and drop. And there you can see it appears in the background behind. Um, now, uh, I don't want to use the default images. I want to use my images. So I'm going to go to Dropbox. Uh, no, I'll go to my desktop images. And then I've got a bunch of images here. Uh, they're just a bunch of random images. Um, not, not the greatest to show off photography, but they work for the purposes of this um, video. Click open and um, it's uh, loading those 10 images. And there we have it, they're in the background. 
Now, um, so I can uh, tra add whatever kinds of tr transitions I want, horizontal or vertical. Um, right now it's horizontal. Um, and then the buttons with which to uh, navigate uh, are up here. I'm gonna move my left button here to say the middle on the left side and the right button to the right side. And I wanna align those with each other. So I do that and then that red line tells us they're lined up. And now the navigation buttons to go through to change this background image are on either side. Um, so uh, we can um, go through and uh, as you see, um, I can click on them and then we've got a counter box that tells us which image we're on, six of 10, whatever. You can get rid of that. You don't need these buttons at all if you don't want. Um, you could get rid of both of them. Um, uh, whatever you want. Um, okay. Uh, so um, let me undo that um, and show you something else. Okay. Another thing is when you're dragging these in initially and you choose your images, um, I hope it doesn't, okay. So the, you have this slideshow options here. So um, you can change your transit, you can you know have it autoplay, in which case the slides will change automatically or unclick autoplay. If you have un, autoplay unclicked, they have to hand navigate with those forward and backward buttons. I'm gonna get rid of the forward and backward buttons um, oops, um, sorry, oops, I got rid of it. Uh, let me drag it back in. Um, so I drag that in, um, I'm not going to bring in the photos. Uh, I'll just leave the default black and white ones here for the moment. Um, but anyway, auto, you can change your transition speed here and have it increase or decrease so I can have it more or less. Um, you can have the transition speed. You can um, play once, which will only play them once. You can shuffle them. You can have it wipe. Um, and then uh, you have different um, other different options here. Um, anyway, so let's take out these navigation buttons and just have it be the way that it is. Um, and then uh, as you can see, it's gonna just continue to change on its own. Um, so if we preview that in the browser, Here's what it looks like. Now, black and white wasn't the greatest idea for, um, for you know, having this text in black here over black and white photos, but uh, you get the idea. You can go in and change it, or um, this doesn't have to be a full screen slideshow either. You can make it a slideshow that's just in uh, a banner area up here. Um, you can, you know, select and you know, basically you can click and drag and scale it. So it's only down here in the middle of the page, you know, and then if we preview that in the browser, you'll see it's looks a lot better. Um, and then it's gonna s slowly transition from slide to slide. It doesn't need to be a wipe like that. Um, you can change it to a dissolve or whatever you want. Um, again, you could make this just be, say, 
a really thin banner up at the top and wipe from image to image, uh, kind of like the NKU homepage used to have I, before they redesigned it uh, about a week or two ago. Anyway, you get the idea. So when you're done, you have um, multiple options to, um, to upload it. So you can um, basically, uh, you can publish um, to Business Catalyst, export as HTML, um, and you can upload to an FP, FTP host, um, you know, uh, or whatever you want to do. Um, basically, um, if you don't have web space um, to publish uh, on and say for for say you have to hand off the website to someone else to do some design work on, you would save it, you'd export it as HTML. Um, so when you go save website, you're basically just saving um, a saving the Muse file. Uh, as you can see, it's appeared uh, in the background there. But say you want to hand off the website to someone who maybe doesn't use Muse, you can export as HTML. It basically will link to your Typekit account because it uses um, that Typekit font that we chose. Um, so uh, you need to give the site a name. So Eric's Photography dot com um okay and then it exports and it takes a minute or two to export all that and um it's configured with an email address which does not match the server name um yeah that's because i just made it up um anyway uh so there you have it and that appears um wherever i just saved that on my hard drive um uh, but basically, that's what you'll want to do when you uh, save an assignment to turn in here, um, and you're not going to be if you're not going to be uploading it. Okay, uh, that's basically Adobe Muse, uh, and I went way longer than I ha had intended. But I really believe that Muse is the web design tool of the future, so I wanted to spend a little longer on the video this time. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I look forward to seeing the great websites that you all create.